Hey everybody, welcome to Clickstoff today. This is your host Daniel Powell speaking. Just want to let everyone know that Clickstoff is brought to you by Trollandtoad.com. Trollandtoad.com is the world's largest hero clicks retailer. Save 5% off your hero clicks order <clears throat> with coupon code Clickstoff. Merchant and pre order items do not apply. And joining me today is Tyler. I don't know if he got to eat on New Year's Eve or not. Spees. Um, I did eat. I don't know what you mean. Where did you get your Where did you get your takeout from? Chipotle. No, I got Chinese. I forgot about that. Oh, okay. You never You never let us know what you actually ended up with. There was a Chinese place open, so good to go. Not there, New Year's. That's true. That's true. And Alex banging in with the facts coups. Yep. They come to me with all your Chinese New Year facts. I don't know. Yeah. So, oh, we made it through the holidays. Uh, yeah, I'm done with them. Some people might not be. Now I gotta ask, have you so? Tyler, I'm guessing you didn't decorate for Christmas. Uh, I did actually not do that, no. Uh, being a bachelor, that does not surprise me that you did not. No, we just celebrate Hanukkah. Oh, okay. Did you I decorate didn't. for that? No, I decorate for Hanukkah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, D Dan, do, does your family decorate all that uh, stuff for so Christmas? Yes. Um, I mean, we put up our Christmas tree... Uh, but since we had just recently moved, the only decoration we put up outside was a eight foot tall blow up Mickey Mouse, which is still currently up. Yeah, that was my next question. So, have you taken it down, or when do you plan to take down the Christmas decorations? <sighs> I tell you what, it's oh, the Christmas tree's already down. The mm -hmm. Mickey Mouse is still up. Yeah, it's it for my family. It's interesting, like. I grew up, my mom would be putting away Christmas decorations, like, when we were having dessert that night. Like, she, holiday over, bam, decorations are gone. But we've really been uh, embracing the whole, like, 12 days of Christmas thing. Yeah. And so, for us, it's like, well, Christmas is still going. Like, it will be for another, like, five days or something. So, we won't take down our Christmas decorations for a while, but we also don't put them up until like a week after Thanksgiving or something. Like we don't put them up super early. Yeah, I mean, we do typically Thanksgiving weekend for putting up stuff. Mm -hmm. um, as far as when the Mickey Mouse comes down, I don't know. Like, I, it's kind of cold here, and I don't really want to just get outside and do it right now. It's like 60 here. It's ridiculous like, right now. Is it Christmas Mickey Mouse? Yeah, he's got little presents around him and stuff. It has like a little fan, and it blows up, and he's like eight feet tall. Yeah, I'm I'm not looking forward to taking down stuff because my wife bought we have a twelve foot Christmas tree, um, that I'm gonna have to get rid of because it's a it's a live Christmas tree. Mm, don't burn it in your fireplace. Well, no, we live on a giant property for rental, so I'm just gonna chuck it over the fence into a like a, the wooded area because it's the woods. So yeah, definitely don't light it on fire then. Yeah, no, nah, not going to do that. But I am definitely not eager to get back to work and and the holidays. So if we could keep it going for like another week, that'd be sweet. Can 2021 yeah. do that for me, please? I know this this New Year's Eve and New Year's Day like compounded into a weekend is like super nice. Yeah. Yo. So, well, uh, <laughs> you guys doing anything? Do you? I, I went to bed about ten o'clock. That's what I did. <laughs> uh, we stayed up because we had people stay at our house for a week. My brother and sister in law and their eight kids. Um, legit eight or yeah, legit eight. Yeah. Um. So it was yeah. a packed house. They and. We had New Year's. We were staying up till midnight anyway, playing games, like board games and stuff. It was a lot of fun. Um, 
and we really only just like all right and midnight <laughs> we all was like yay all right that's it it's pretty much what we did we played board games a lot nice packed household though so. well in looking back at 2020 which was uh I think arguably the dumpster fire of a year, right? I think, um, but we had a lot of good things come out of the year, um, including a lot of good hero click sets and lots of things to talk about. And uh, that's what we're here for today. Um, so, do we want to start? I don't know. Was we did so in years past? I want to say 2018 and newer and older, we put out, you know, player of the year votes. Um, And, and you know what? A lot of that stuff just turns out to be popularity contests and not uh, actually based on player skill. Um, As was shown a few years, we did it. Um, So I think we can start out with just go ahead and saying congratulations, Adam Friedman, for being player of the year. Yep. Definitely. Yeah. I don't know so. who even... <laughs> no, yeah, it's Adam, for sure. Yeah, it's Adam, right? I don't, there's not even a discussion for me, right? It's it's, it's Adam, right? Um, and you can say whatever, right? If you want to say, given the circumstances of 2020, it's Adam. Well, whatever. Then there is no other circumstances in 2020 in which to measure by, so... It's 2020, Adam. Congratulations. Yeah, and I don't think it, it's a 2020 Adam that warrants like an asterisk or something. I mean, there was still... no. I don't either. I don't either. I'm just saying some people might. Yeah, I mean, sure, there wasn't. I mean, we still had a pretty large national event, arguably uh, as large as normal national events. Are pretty close. 120 some people. Yeah, it was pretty pretty even. Um. And then it was, say what you will about the Rock Online World event. That's fine. But still, even just on the merit of Nationals, I think he warrants it because he he did well on that and in Team Worlds, if I remember correctly. So, um, or uh, a team, a team Nationals, sorry. Team Nationals, yeah. Yeah, so he, he did good in both. So, I, yeah, I definitely think it's warranted. Yeah, I mean, I agree. So... <laughs> Uh, With our first voted poll, um, we had 2020 maps, and um, surprisingly, to me at least, um, this one was won by Doom's Castle. Um, And is is that because of the map bonus, you think? Yes. It could be, but I've never seen that actually played. Um, I think it's probably just because it's Doom's Castle. I mean the 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 what is it the Brotherhood team plays it. Oh, do they? Oh, yeah. The the what's his name? Exodus. Exodus. Yeah, Exodus and Magnetos and stuff. Um. So it's actually a fairly dynamic map. It is a mirror map. Um. For all intents and purposes, it actually is a mirror map. Um, but it's actually a pretty decent, like, map. It's outdoor. Um, you know, it's got some neat stuff going on for it. So, um, yeah. I can see it. It's not my particular style of map, right? I'm more a fan of Hoth, right? Which, that was our third place map of Glen Grove Cemetery. Um, and then the research outpost was number two. Was that a... Don't even know what that is, to be honest that, with you. That's a, I think that's a rock map, right? Yeah, it, it is a rock map. Oh, I okay. Just... Yeah, I like that one. That's the one with the outdoor and then the the rooms with that are on the second elevation that are the little, uh, well, the research outpost. Yep. Yeah. I don't know. Just, I'd never really, <laughs> I don't really care about maps that much. That's just like not something I, I pay attention to. Yeah. Some of these I hadn't paid a lot of attention to um, in general, but like Doom's Castle, I can definitely see why why that one won uh, with its map bonus. Yeah, uh, and just as a reminder for folks as you're listening and going through this, our year-end awards are only for hero clicks released or elements released in that year. Yeah. Um, 
So if there's other maps that are really good and being played that weren't released in 2020, it's the only the maps released in 2020. Yeah, I think it's definitely the location bonus. The the ability to give you either an automatic leadership if you lose map at least once or just having the bonus being able to... Uh, it's at the beginning of the game, choose a friendly character once per turn. When that character rolls for leadership, they may re-roll the result. Yeah, that's pretty good. And if it's a Doctor Doom, they increase the roll by plus one. But either way, having that re-roll for leadership is pretty good. So that's the Red Skull map. Yeah, I like that map. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, so next up we have Bystander of the Year. Um... And this one was surprisingly close. Uh, winning only by two votes is Paparazzi. Oh, I haven't voted yet. Maybe I'll vote Chewy, so that way we can get it closer to 57. I yeah. voted Chewy. <laughs> Chewy certainly has made a, an impact, you know, greater in the year. But I think Paparazzi will make a longer-term impact. And, um um, so if you judge Chewy just by its 2020 performance, you know, I think Chewy definitely wins. But if you judge it by its performance over its entire time in modern, I think it'll be paparazzi. I like how it's like it's 57 for paparazzi, 55 for Chewy, and then the next close is four. <laughs> like it was not close between everybody else. Yeah, we've just we've had Chewy for so it feels like so long because yeah, the set came out in what uh, February or when did? It yeah, C A C A A V came. Yeah, out February. February. So we had ten months of Chewy, where we only had three months of Paparazzi. So that just yeah. shows how crazy Paparazzi is to just in three months just take over. See, but like Paparazzi is yeah. not crazy. It's the fact that Mary Jane, a fifteen point piece, can make three of them for free. Not for free, but autonomous. Well, no, I mean Paparazzi by itself is a good pop. It's, it's, really, buy, it it's a good it's bystander. Really good. For sure, I agree. But it's not flurry blades perplex. Good. Now I think here's the thing. I think if Chewy was autonomous, it would be a hundred to yeah, a it would four. Be insane. Yeah. Right. So, like, and we're talking about the difference of two votes here, right? So it's not like it's it's a huge difference here. Um, Chewy is still insanely powerful. Um, it's just Paparazzi just has that little bit of a narrow edge in our poll. Yeah, if Chewy was autonomous, then Captain Marvel would have been watch listed, <laughs> or at least handled more. I think autonomous was would have just put Chewy way too far. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I think I think in his current spot, he's great, and he's not just. And I mean, the watch list proves that Cap Captain Marvel and Chewie is just in the right place for the point value. They're not too oppressive, and while Chewie can pop out as a free action or whatever, it's not game breaking. If you want to look at the Pog just like by itself, out like outside of his figure, you can just look to um, Jason Pogs he's playing, and Chewie's still the go-to Pog. Yeah. But I, I agree. It. Yeah. The figure that pops it out is, is, is I guess, somewhat relevant, right? But I mean, you know, for two Gross. votes, right? Yeah. Um, so next up, we have Prime of the Year. Uh, and then at 54 votes uh, was Punisher War Machine over Batman's 40 votes. Yeah. Um, he kind of took over the second half of the year, right? He started gaining popularity around Nats, and then he just kept kept building. Mm -hmm. I'm a little. I'm a yeah, little. I think, I think Punisher War Machine would have been a lot higher. And the problem is, I think. I mean, obviously he won, but my Punisher War Machine experience was, um, he came out during ID cards, and I don't think that he was quite good enough during ID cards. Um, and then we went through this whole lull of, uh, you know, post-modern tournaments online where you had uh, Black Widow coming out and she was super powerful. And then you ended up having, 
you know, Captain Marvel dominance and then some Batman stuff. Uh, and then I think, you know, as we got into the summer, right, you know, as you mentioned, people kind of figured out that, hey, he is pretty good. Um, um, what are you talking about with ID cards? Like Punisher War Machine came out in CAV. When ID cards were still legal. Oh, yeah, because we lost them in June. I, see, the problem is I don't remember them us losing them in June because... Well, they, we'd lost them so much further, earlier than that because nobody wanted to play with them after Exactly, they exactly. So in well, my that's head, what I was talking about, that post, that's what I meant by that postmodern lull right. at the beginning of the pandemic when everyone just gave up on so the current pandemic. modern. That just shows how long 2020 was because in yeah. my head... They retired like two years ago. Like we had in my head, we haven't had IDs in like a, at least a year and a half. It's but it's great. but it's been six months. Yeah. So, yeah. so I was going through like all my pictures of the year uh, with Sam. We were, you know, of course, you know, we were going through our move and Theo and all that kind of stuff. But HeroClix related, um, I went through some of the last builds with Uni, and I didn't. Th- I don't think I built with him in modern after the middle of March. Which was unfortunate. I'm looking at the prime of the year poll. I'm actually surprised how low Micron is. He only got two votes. But like I get it, Punisher War Machine, Batman, Black Leopard. But it just seems like Micron to me is almost the fourth one. Or close. I know there's only one vote differentiating them, but I, I would have. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things. You only get one choice, though, right? I mean, we didn't yeah. do a multi-select poll. Uh, um, I think we did do a multi-select poll. Huh? I think we did do a multi-select poll. We did. Yeah, I don't sure. know. I can't. I can't check right now. So. Um. Yeah, we did. We did. I could change. I could add my vote and change it. Yeah. You actually, oh. put Micron over. For me, Black Panther. I would put him over. Black Leopard. Yeah, Black Leopard. <clears throat> yeah, Black me too. I mean, I I don't. That's what confuses me. I I, I really like Micron. So, I mean, it, it could be that it's just such a niche team. Like it's it's not a team that sees a lot of play unless you play Alpha Strike, and you did play this type of team. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so. I maybe the only thing holding him back is because like the. Atoms are actually more played than the Micron just because they can be played with other primes. Um, mm-hmm. So maybe, but I don't know. Micron's really good. <laughs> well, I think I think here's what happened to Micron is that the... And... and uh, how do I want to say this? Maybe... Um, maybe that was the effect of uh, the, of the pandemic on Jason and Tyler. Um was Micron was in that niche, unthemed Alpha Strike team that uh, Hosafa played. Mm -hmm. And, um, but Tyler and Jason kind of championed the Justice League version of that team with Power Woman and Wonder Twins and all kinds of cool stuff. Starter Manhunter. Um, But then you guys ran into, you know, Pandemic, burnout right i guess is the, sure. the best way to put it and then we got hit with spider-man 1776 yeah. um kind of all at the same time from that you know burnout time in july through september then into october um you know you guys all those things compounded together so i think maybe micron could have had a little bit more play a little bit more high level play if uh, you and uh, Jason had had more time to work on your team. That's possible. I think in the future we'll definitely see more Micron than uh, Black Panther uh, or Leopard. I mean, if nothing else, it's just because Krakoa is coming out and people are going to try that. Right. Well, now that 1776 is, you know, not as powerful, you're going to end up with um, that Justice League team of y'all is playable again. I think Black Leopard, though, he saw most play, though, with the Fantastic Four switching out teams. Yes, for sure. 
which we're about to get future foundation, which means theoretically we should have more switching out pieces, not necessarily having the ability, but ones that have Fantastic Four and can switch out. So that might make the team a little bit more popular if there's more versatility in the units. So I agree. Yeah. he's not one that's, I don't think he's going away. I think he could potentially get better. It just really depends on future foundation. Yeah, I think you, I just, I still think Adam's more play or micro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, I think what a lot of people have figured out with Black Leopard is that he is very susceptible to the pinch. The pinch, yep. The pinch, sure. the pinch, the pinch. Um, yeah, that's why I killed him. Yeah, that's how I, I mean, when I played in Tennessee State, I played against one with Black Widow and uh, Voyager and Captain Marvel, and that's um, um. I was with the pinch, like I, I just blocked his angles, and it didn't. It was it was not an issue at all for me. Yeah, I like him way better as an offensive piece than defensive. Like on an off strike team. Yeah. Yeah. Um. All right. Primes. Hopefully, we'll get some new ones this year. Some good ones. Because Prime Apocalypse is not quite cutting it out for me. No, but Vulcan, there's though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sculpt of the year, standard size. And by standard size, you mean a one-by base. Yeah, I did. Just because yeah. the only Colossal that was released was Galactus. So I think that one would just win. So I didn't want that to happen. That's right. Yeah, we didn't have any big booster sets this year, did we? Um no. So, in a runaway, I guess, by double the amount of votes, uh, you had God, Emperor, Doom. And I... I don't know. I don't think this was a good year for Sculpts. Like, God, Emperor, Doom's fine, but he's not, like, like super Iceman that's one in the past or anything like that, you know? Um... Uh, he... He is... He is Doom. Doom. I, I agree with that. Oh. So, so that that commands some respect in and of itself. Um, but it's a good, it's a good sculpt. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not saying it's not a good sculpt. I'm saying it's not like a basically super rare Ice Man. It's not super rare Ice Man. <laughs> that's, it's, that's, it's definitely not super rare Ice Man from UXM, right? Yeah, that's my go-to when I think of like an amazing sculpt. That's always my go-to. It's probably well, then in this, in, in to like for me in this case, right? If, if that's the barometer uh none of these measure up to that yeah that and that's what i'm saying like i I don't this year was just kind of not a sculpt year i guess well all right so real quick Mm -hmm. let's looking at just chases because i know there's good super rares but they're kind of hit or miss Mm -hmm. so if we look at the chases of each set sculpt wise captain america really didn't have much outside of strange i guess strange was cool Strange was cool. I agree with that. But like Namor, it was typical Namor coming out of water. Thor, it was a Just weird. Th- it was a Superman Thor essentially. Yeah. Well, the Thor. The problem. My problem with the Thor sculpt is that it was too narrow to yeah. be dynamic. It was just him like blasting off. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Ghost Rider is kind of cool, it's but no go- bike. Yeah. <laughs> but I see Ghost Rider. I want a big bike, but I know he doesn't yeah. use. Or was it the she? Was it um? No, it's Robbie Race. Yeah, Robbie Race it, it didn't have the bike in this one, so it's like, okay. Absorbing Man is Absorbing Man. Um, and then Ultron, they had the Clicks FX, you know, to, to make it a little bit more dynamic, but I don't really consider Clicks FX with the sculpts. Yeah, it's but right we've, seen, we've seen good Ultron sculpts. Yeah, right. It's doing- right, exactly. Um, Justice League Unlimited, I, I mean, outside of playability, most of those... Trouble alerts and whatnot were just meh, and that's because of the cartoon. The cartoon yeah. wasn't flashy. There's not much right. you can do. About it. Like Brainiac, the arguably the best one out of the gr- bunch, is just literally him standing there. <laughs> it's yeah. like there's no. Yeah, I got, a bra- I, got a, I got a Brainiac right here on my desk, actually. The Brainiac could be a common sculpt, and no one would blink an eye. Yeah, like the the best ones would probably be Vulcan because he's got the. You well, know, I he's think got the actually like the. The best sculpt in like the JLU set was probably like Robot Soups. 
Yeah. Why? I, I I just think it's a well, good looking skull. It's just I don't know, just kind of my opinion. Dark side was pretty good in that though. The little, yeah. Okay, that's true. The little dome effect coming out of his hand, like that was pretty neat. But that's about okay. it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, you're right. My black, my Chase Black Widow, one of them have, has broken. So um, that was just her on a peg. So. Um. Yeah. So Fantastic Four. We have Doom, of course, but Sue is okay. Yeah. Um, Valeria's just jumping in the air. Franklin's sitting there looking at a ball. Like, none of those are, like, Chase, oh my goodness, they're amazing. Uh, Maker and Reed are just, you know, they're Mr. fantastic S figures. They look stretchy. Nothing exciting. Um, Carnage and, and people, you know, Steampunk Penny was number well, I think two. maybe... Like well, I think hold on back on Fantastic Four. I think if I was to have to give one to Fantastic Four, like probably super rare dad thing. That's was mine too. That was a good sculpt, and it's like it wasn't like super dynamic or anything, but it was just it was a good sculpt. <laughs> I liked it. Yeah, it was very yeah. funny. It was clean. It was like what you ex- I don't know. It was just good. Yeah. 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 I get that. It just right. wasn't dynamic, and I think people. For sculpt of the year, you're looking for dynamic, right? Well, I mean, and God Doom's fairly dynamic, right? He's floating yeah. in the air. He's got his, his cape is, inter- yeah. His cape is billowing behind him. It it's looks great. Yeah. It's as no, that's not true. I was gonna say it's as good a God Doom sculpt you could do, but that's not true. What if you had him holding Thanos' spine? Like, good God, that would be a sculpt. Right now, well, I think that's why Steampunk Penny came in a solid second place. Was yeah. There's nothing dynamic about her sculpt. It's just a really good figure. It is. And it's that's a good sculpt, obviously. That I think that's what I voted for, actually. Now tell me this. I did not play in the in the generation with Silver Surfer, but we got these surfers that look pretty sweet. But is that just the generic surfer of old? Yeah, that's that's pretty much a generic surfer. Okay. I mean, yeah, just... Portal, I guess, but yeah, to, like to me, it's like finally a Silver Surfer, and he looks sweet coming out of the portal. But yeah. if it's something people old, you know, players have played a while, and it's like, well, that's what we've always gotten. Then obviously, it's not a great sculpt if it's like a reuse. Um, okay. Then the last, and then I think I think maybe Lady Phoenix could have gotten higher, but uh, I don't know. There's only like 16 people that, or whatever, <laughs> that has, has held her in her hand. So yeah. I have no idea if she's good or not. Yeah, I mean, so as far as the Carnage chases go, I mean, I feel like Leonardo Venom was a pretty good cha- uh, sculpt. Like, I feel like he sh- he wasn't even on the list, so that's why I'm a little surprised. Um, all those were okay. Well, yeah. all all of them were small. Like, Glenn of Arc was small. Miles Miles West was small. Like, Penny was obviously. I, I see why she got second. Big old sculpt. It looks awesome. Yeah. Spider Hammer Eyes, kind of cool, but. Yeah, I agree. I mean, if House of X had come out in 2020, I think it'd be a different yeah, subject. Yeah, it stops for sure. I but, think. Yeah. Yeah, just kind of a okay, just okay for this year for scores. Yeah. All right, uh, Chase of the Year, and that one. Now, see some of these. Then our polls did come out prior to the watch list. Um, but which I think is, what it comes that's for 2018 or huh? 2000, <laughs> that's for 2020. Yeah. So it makes sense, right? So <laughs> Spider Man 1776 took a commanding lead over God Emperor Doom in this situation, which is weird to me. I mean, I get so Spider Man, no, that that's not weird, that makes sense. Um, I was just saying it's strictly for meta, but. God Emperor Doom was a big deal for a lot of people. Obviously, it was the first Doom to come back. Um, not the first one, because we had it on the starter. But Doom finally came back. God Emperor Doom was probably, I think we said it on the podcast, was like the most like anticipated figure, like maybe ever in Hero Clicks. So that makes sense. Yeah. And, then, just sure. because he was dominant. and he's placed, you know, Maybe not one, but he's placed in, as well. So yeah, he's, he's definitely not top tier meta, but he's definitely a meta piece for sure. That's right. I'm I'm kind of sad. 
how I mean it makes sense how low Ultron is. Like number five is actually pretty good, but yeah. can think of how we were in February talking about the the Captain yeah. America set coming out. It's like some a, a 150 point piece with a 14 attack. Ultron That's, so power creep three stop yeah yeah and, and now it's like he's never played he's only played at fifty points it's only well, played he's, fifty yeah well he got I think the problem is is that he got yeeted by Steampunk Penny as far as meta play um yeah kind of I mean he does different things I, I think it's more like Amazo and the other ones because Ultron was sitting at fifty points. But you could play a Mazo to give more functionality than just the prop. Because Ultron was mostly played for the prop. And like some little extra things, but triple mind as, control. Well, no, he was that wasn't really the big deal. Like people tried to play him at higher, but it just for whatever reason wasn't working out. And I think part of that is because he's uh outwit outwittable. Like he could just be outwitted. Yeah. So that's big... he's a piece I might go back and look at to see how Galactus works with him. Um to protect him from outwit and grant a little bit of extra to see if that's enough. Cause I remember not being outwittable is what I feel like hurt him a lot. Just being able to be like, goodbye, all these, you know, you can't move now or yeah, being outwittable is just a big deal, especially when widow was out and all the other pieces that we had. He's someone that I might try to revisit. Cause it's really hard to ignore a 14 point, like a 14 attack. I think it's really hard to just say, for only 150 points. Like, that's... I don't know. Yeah. Something, something about that's like, eh. <clears throat> I think he's about where he should be. I don't, I don't think he's being overlooked. I think he's right about where he should be. He's Well, now, I think the thing is, is that with the 1776 errata, there's a lot of things that could be coming up here in the new year. True. So, you know, the, the, field, the field's wide open, but it's also pre-House of X right now. Right. So there's a there's a whole bunch of beef stew going on that's being brewed up right now. That's I did for for one, maybe uh, for ten poles to come back. I think that's the biggest impact of House of X so far is that we have legitimate temple pieces we can try. So speaking of beef stew, when <laughs> <laughs> what is the segue? The the right. segue here is more like so go, thinking about 2020. In general, because that's what we're talking about. Would you say we lost about the meta that we know it now mm -hmm. consists of maybe only about 50% of the team builders? Like, you know, we had we see so, so many unique teams and some of them come out of the woodwork out of nowhere, like this qualifier in somewhere or this WKO somewhere. But none of those happened. Everything was online for the most part. So you don't have people like C uh, Dustin Cedars really playing a ton because he does, he didn't like online play. Like, are we missing some of those think tanks, some of those builders that maybe would have built built differently into nationals? Like, how, what percent of? Oh, that's a that's a good point, and you know we got a question kind of from that as well uh, later on uh, from Raphael, but. Right. Uh, that? Maybe not nationals because I feel like nationals was like the last event that was like I don't know like and it it felt like maybe not normal because it was online but it felt as big as it had been in the past years. Yeah, you got some people West Coast. You got a lot of people all over the country that finally participated, but you got a lot of new people that right. would so not Alex... really compete locally or i'm sorry compete in wkos and whatnot just coming out to play so right i think i think what i would say is that like using dustin as an example right as i still think your team builders side of dustin is helping out the clicksmen right you know in their discords and whatnot for all these online events right Maybe. um because uh, you know you saw that he what he won texas states with that team that uh um, yeah uh, Esteban had been playing, you know, Dustin. quite a bit. Yeah, but I think his team was before, like, it didn't have any Carnage pieces or anything on it, right? It was that's right. Yeah. So you've got, but so here's what here's my point is that it's not just the team builders that we're missing. You're missing the people that can team build and play like Dustin. So just the that's what you're missing out on. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of those folks 
that uh, team build, innovative teams, and play really well um, that 2020 has kind of taken away from us, at least hopefully temporarily. Yeah, so it's it's going to be really interesting when things start normalizing later in the year to see how the meta evolves with hopefully the returning influx of players that we've been missing to maybe reinvigorate some of these older pieces or older teams that, you know, pieces like, uh, you know, this is kind of a Dustin type team, but like Gardner and stuff like that. I know Crampton played a little bit of Gardner, but, you know, he's still yeah, legal. No, uh, no, he played Trader. Trader, uh, sorry. He, he played Trader. Uh, da, 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 George is still playing Gardner. Yeah. So it's like pieces like that that have, you know, Kobik and pieces we have haven't played in a while because it's just kind of old feeling. Like, are we going to start seeing a reemergence of that because we're having players come back, having to relearn a whole new meta, and maybe they're kind of going back to their old favorites in efforts of staying relevant? I don't know. It's going to be very interesting, I think. Yeah, I agree. That's cool. Yeah, I like that. I like that. I like that uh, bit of hope going into the new year. Um, meta piece under 50 points, and this is important um, that it was from this year, and I just clicked off of it. Meta piece under 50 points. Uh, uh, number and, one by mile was Mary Jane. <laughs> Uh, not by a mile, but I mean by, by about a third amount, a third yeah. of the amount of votes. Um, which yep. I I agree. Mary Jane is just dumb. Like she's <laughs> dumb. she's 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 group level good. She she's probably better. Um, maybe it's very comparable, I guess. Yeah, I mean it, it's two different things, but we're just talking yeah. about like uh, an auto include piece on theme team unthemed teamed right if you have 15 points you just throw mary jane if you had 20 you threw group right yeah <coughs> yeah she's that good um so i like, think it's oh go ahead tyler uh, no i was just gonna say she's she's she is that good she's far and away like one up if not the best um like bang for your buck as far as points i would say that maybe second in the meta right now is probably valeria <laughs> so um both of those are just like crazy good right. yeah what i'd like to take away from these polls is not necessarily number one and two because those are usually pretty clear like everyone knew mary jane was going to take it and valeria is right up there i'm, I'm interested in what else was mentioned and i'm pretty surprised how few pieces are mentioned like not even yeah. like because this wasn't standard pieces, right? It's just pieces under 50. Does it, did it have to be their low, lower dial? or No, no like, just 50, 50 and under. So like any of the Colossals? Will that have worked in this? No, well, there was no the, Colossals. Really oh, that's right. 2020, uh, the others that came out before. Okay, yeah. good. But um, there's just some other smaller pieces that I'm just... I like, would what? maybe put Adam would be one that I'm surprised yeah. didn't list. Um, and for what it's worth, like Micron would have qualified for this one as well. Exactly. Yeah, but I th I think Adam's better than Micron, so I would have put Adam before him. But um, yeah, like, Wonder Twins got one vote. Wonder Twins is really good. Um, Thor's not at, like Chase Thor at fifty was playable for a while. I, Ultron at fifty was playable. I never saw Thor played at fifty. Uh, um, seen, yeah, Thor Jam was always seventy five where was he had it? running okay. shot. Ultron, I don't know if he deserves to make this over any of the other pieces. I like what? What do you? What? <laughs> what what's missing that you think should be there? I, yeah, I, well, I, I agree with Adam. Well, I think it's just one of those where, I mean, you could argue any of the other trouble alerts. Like trouble alerts could be on here, right? I think the thing though is that like a lot of people when they think of a meta piece like that, right, is that they're thinking the onboard value. Yeah. Um. I mean, even off the board, right? Like, Brainiac competes with a lot of other things, right, that, you know, just aren't as good, right? Yeah. I'm oh, sorry. I I, 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 I should, that, that's a confusing statement. Here's a Brainiac, right, has Lex and Grodd 
and even the trouble alerts to compete against uh, in this category, you know, even in this year. So, I mean, you know, I think he's about, yeah, he's about where he should be. He He's obviously ranking the top of all this, right? Like, Grodd didn't make the list or something like that. Yeah, and my bad. I mentioned Ultron. I forgot this was under 50. You didn't include 50. So oh, I did. Yeah, you did a 50 to 99. So that that's my bad on that. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. So that makes all that other stuff mute. Yeah, that, but... yeah, that's why, like, you don't see Black Leopard. Yeah. I was really confused that's by true. that. But that's why I like to take away from some of these is just seeing what other pieces people, like, are like, yeah, this piece was great. And, like, it's a random piece we didn't think of. And it's like, what am I missing with this? Like, yeah. If someone was like, oh, yeah, this this random Fantastic Four figure for a Doombots. I love Doombots. And it's like, what am I missing about Doombots? <laughs> like, is there nope. something I'm missing? <laughs> it's surprising. Oh, that's like, right. Yeah, so Micron wouldn't have been on this poll either. So yeah. we just confused ourselves with our own poll that we created ourselves. Yeah. Like Steampunk, Steampunk Penny isn't on there either. She's yeah. 45, and she was only ever played at 45. Yeah, so. but this is meta piece of the year. I don't think she is that. <laughs> I mean, she's she a, a meta piece that's under 50. Yeah, I mean, she it's is. just she's better than Wonder Twins, I argue. Yeah. And whatever, Bat, I mean, I guess we have Batman Prime on there twice because we have Batman Prime and she's someone put in Batman Twins. Blue. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, I don't think, I like, this isn't, pieces that were good under 50 this is you vote for the meta piece of the year so i think that's why you see the disparity there i just Um, feel like you see a bigger disparity because you have people that want to state well obviously mary jane is the best but i feel like this piece should be the best or you know people that like to try to stray away from the norm and i was surprised with how few people strayed away from the norm i guess that's all i'm trying to say is I expected to see yeah. like maybe more one votes or two votes, but it's literally only six things got votes on this. Yeah, and I mm-hmm. added more things that just didn't get votes. So yeah, whereas everything else, like you back to Chase of the, um, or what was one of the other ones we talked about, Sculpt of the Year. I mean, that had at least ten things on it, so it just shocked me that we only had six. It's like, oh, that's sad. I yeah, think it's the sure. because I, I just met it like meta piece of the year is supposed to just like you're only voting for what you think is the best so i think it should the disparity makes sense to me yeah yeah i'm with you there um so in that less confusing part of the category um is meta piece 50 to 99 um huh it's a stacked group it is uh, very stacked, right? So Spider-Man 1776 definitely takes the cake there with the most amount of votes. Um, yeah. And then Captain Marvel is um, second. Um, and, you know, it's uh, in looking at third, right, where we're getting into Alex's thing here is Punisher War Machine, right? So Punisher War Machine is really, really good, but he's almost not good well, I'm not going to say that. He's He needs 1776, right? He needs what the catapulted him up to the forefront. Um, but now 1776 well, no, also made a larger impact on more teams than just PWM did. Uh, Punisher War Machine started seeing play before 1776 came out. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, I agree with you. He's not as good as 1776. Um I'm surprised at Captain Marvel being that high. I mean, I I agree with it because I you know I, I voted for it, but I feel like Punisher War Machine might have won more this year. So maybe I'm wrong. It, it feels uh, like, there was yeah. a hot there was a hot couple months with her and Black Widow that she yeah, was just winning cool. everything. Yeah. yeah, I mean, just those three pieces, right? The Marvel Marvel Widow team won one of the big online pod play tournaments. Yeah. yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Um, yeah, then you have a lot, of, a lot of just um, like one or two votes in this one. Um, Ace uh, Franklin Von Doom surprised me as being like the fourth because I don't think I've seen him play. No, that's not true. Isaac played him in yeah. on his fantastic team. So that's, I guess, that's fair. Yeah, I, 
Widow should be probably higher, I would think. But again, I mean, you're voting for the one, so it makes sense that she would never be voted because she was always secondary on any team she was on. But then again, it, are you voting for pieces you've seen, or to you, what is your most meta piece that you've played? Like, people could take... It's because it's such an open question. Yeah, that's fair. Like, if I'm playing an Immortal Hulk team, and I'm picking 50 to 99, then Ace is 100% my number one piece within that range, because Ace on that team is awesome. And that's why I would vote for that. If I didn't play any other teams, if I didn't play 76 or Captain Marvel or anything, and all I know is this team, I'm like, my favorite piece that I've played in meta is Ace. I think One Piece, and I just voted for it, even though the... You know, we haven't closed these polls. Um, <laughs> one one piece I think that I've seen in online tournaments grow in the past month or two um, is Spider Pharaoh. Yeah. Just seeing a lot more play because of all the functionality she brings as a as a taxi and ruler and all of that. So out of this set, I mean, obviously she's not Spider Man seventy six or Captain Marvel, Punisher War Machine because she's more of a support piece. But she is one of those pieces. Like I went out and grabbed one pretty not too long ago just because she's very good like it, she's one that you know people don't talk about taxis and support pieces as well as you know as being top meta pieces but she's one that i think came on strong at the end of the year and wouldn't surprise me to see continue to be strong because ruler is a great keyword um see her to be strong going into 2021 so She's someone to keep an eye out on. <coughs> Agreed. Yeah, I agree there. Um, so going up the ranking, we just have a hundred plus here, right? So, you know, committing at least your third of a third of your build, and I would say, unsurprisingly, Black Widow Chase. Yep. This seems about where I should be. Yep. Then, uh, then uh, about a half of a half of it is uh, Mortal Hulk. Then God Doom. Yeah, well, that makes sense. Um, this, I'm sad. I'm sad. Dark Side got no votes. I mean, I get it, <laughs> but this this year, like, I was trying to find these were the only pieces 100 points over that that I could think of. Somebody added um, Captain Marvel and Thor Chase, but I, I didn't think that they deserved it because they were played more, mainly at their lower points. So I only added four on this list myself, and like that was all that I saw that could right. even be. Consumed. Was there even? Hold on a second. I'm going to look and see. Greater than 100, modern age only. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at too. That's released this year. Okay. Yeah, like. Immortal Hulk could definitely make sense at number two because he's just so impactful and he's won a decent amount of things as well. Right. But outside of that, yeah, I mean, there there weren't I mean, a lot of other even, pieces. I mean, like you know, Lady Phoenix is not your meta piece of the year. I'm just looking at things that were released this year that are greater than a hundred. Um, I mean, Null, no, uh, nothing else in Spider Spider Man yeah. here is. Uh, worthy. Absolute carnage, baby. <laughs> that uh, I will say that he is nastier than he might appear on paper. Really? Uh, at um at uh one twenty five. Interesting. Don't don't sleep on him at one at one twenty five. Very uh, interesting. Well, yeah, because uh, well, he's got. Anyways, I could talk about that, right? He's got flurry, giant reach three. And then yeah. he generates those little minion things. When he um, kills them. Yeah. And uh, he's got the, he starts with the Carnage symbiote, so he can heal. And he's got shape change. Um, yeah, so it can be, it can be a little dicey there. So don't, don't sleep on him just because you see him across the table from you. Okay, that's fair. I mean, I um, was surprised by doppelganger prime so i'm never going to be surprised by anything else again that's right <laughs> um i don't understand that at all still yeah. there's another piece i need to get i haven't gotten a do- doppelganger yet yeah. he's, he's cheap right now so um i mean you've got other things on the seat from this year um i mean like super scroll nah doom yeah. title doom very niche but yeah. being played by a couple of good players 
Uh, Sue Storm, I mean, Sue Storm was the, one of the only ways this year to uh, nuke heavies. Watch um, Sue, Sue Storm is one of the only ways to um, uh, destroy a heavy object. Oh, uh, Obviously, um, Borg Queen, clearly. Uh, we're, this is 2020 only. Oh, that's right. Darn. I'm just trying to slide her in any way I can. Man. Yeah. yeah, so, I mean, Captain America, I mean, was... The, some of the chases. I mean, Ultron could have been on this list, but I can see why he's not. Title Doom. I, I just said Title Doom. Oh, I thought you said uh, the God Doom. My bad. Super Scroll was uh, played, but not at one hundred. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's just not not a ton this year. It's all been. I mean, next, a year, big, next year, big Amazo maybe. Maybe, but I, I don't even think I ever saw him played. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, I saw him play this little at the lower points for sure. I forgot about. Yeah, are you, are you, wait, are you talking about Golden Amazo? Maybe Golden Amazo could have been on here. Uh, no, the uh, the other Amazo can be played at higher points. Yeah, yeah. Just, Gold just, Amazo, I didn't see at all. I think uh, he, I saw he, him play a little bit. Yeah, just for like a right when JLU came like out. Two weeks. Like, yeah. yeah. There's a little bit of play. <laughs> I mean, I think this is this poll is going to be um, well, obviously completely different, but much larger next year. Because I mean, I the first set out of the gate, we have a lot of over a hundred point figures that are that good. Can, yeah, that can make a difference. So, yeah, I think realistically, year, Dark Side was the only chance above a hundred out of JLU. Yeah, and he got but, zero. Yeah, but yeah, you're right, Alex. This year is going to be hot. Oh yeah, it's going to be nice. Hopefully. It's going to be hot. It's we should hot. have been talking about this cess. About what? It just got delayed. Nah, <laughs> even if we did, we don't do that because it's so late in the year. Well, Maybe no, we I mean, like, originally, I mean, according to rounds, it was supposed to be in September, remember? Oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe it was supposed, <laughs> it was supposed to be September and it got pushed to January. Yeah, I remember we were talking about House of X, I almost think pre-pandemic. Wondering if we were going to get to play it for Worlds. Yeah. At some point. Yeah, we were hoping that was going to be the boosters yeah. that for teams. Little did we know. Um, so that rounds us out with set of the year. Um, and that is Spider-Man, Venom, and Absolute Carnage. That's... I don't agree with. <laughs> I'm surprised. That'd be my bottom set of the year, I think. What? Maybe. I don't. I didn't think it was that good. Um, okay. What? Well, so like, as far as like, at least as meta goes, I mean, it definitely changed everything. Yeah. I think every single one of the chases are playable. Um, it had objects. I mean, it had equipment. And, I mean, if you just like compare it top to bottom, right? Like chases. Um, definitely the most playable chases are in Spider-Man. I mean, Fantastic Four at Valeria, but... JLU yeah. probably, you could argue, uh, has... Uh, I mean, but I mean. no, you can't. Be, I mean, as far as the top, tippy-top tier. Well, no, I mean, like, if you're talking about pl played pieces, like pieces on a team, technically JLU should sweep because... Almost everybody has trouble alerts and whatnot on their team. So uh, I, I get it, it, but their impact, yes, yeah, I get it. their meta impact. Their meta, yes. Yeah, but if you look at like JLU, you're only talking Brainiac, Grodd, Black Water Vulcan. But we did. The question is phrased as set of the year, not meta set of the year. Yeah, so. but I mean, we but we do focus a lot on meta in our podcast and in our group. So I, I think know, there's I, just I think there's just an inherent slant towards that. I agree there's a slant, but it is dependent on how you word it. Because, like, um, meta piece over 100, Black Widow blew it away. But Chase of the Year, God Doom blew it away. So, um, well, he, he blew Black Widow away. So it does depend on how you ask it. Then this so, is so uh, fun little exercise then. We've got the four main sets, right? Was Carnage, JLU, Fantastic Four, and uh, Captain America. Well, let's how is that? Say what? What was the fifth set? No, I said we had four sets. Yeah, what was the fifth one? 
Black Widow movie is what he's trying to get you to get. Yeah, the, oh, who cares about that one? I wanted um, to just say it. No, nah, it's, it's a feed. That doesn't count. Um, so out of those four sets, how would you rank them? One to four. You personally. Me personally, I voted for Captain America. I love that. But that, that that's just one. I want one to four. Okay. Um, I would do Captain America, JLU, I guess Spider-Man, Fantastic Four. So Fantastic Four would probably be my lowest. Okay. I, I'm honestly surprised how low Fantastic Four is. Just yeah. because everyone was waiting for Fantastic Four. So I feel like it's popularity should have been enough to push it higher than JLU. But the problem is, is that even casual players want some power. And I don't feel like there was enough power that came out of the Fantastic Four set. Uh, I mean, I feel like there was more power than JLU. JLU had dark side and the trouble alerts. But the trouble alerts... But the trouble alerts were the trouble uh, makers uh, were so powerful, right? And then you still had fan, and it is DC, right? So it's the only DC set of the year. So the well, DC fans would necessarily push that one above, say, some of the weaker Marvel. Any any weaknesses in any of the Marvel sets are going to be exacerbated by the DC fans only getting one set a year. That's true. Uh, yeah, I, I just, you know, I think the longer we go with JLU, the worse it's going to be l- the impression it left. Like, we obviously, I think we can all agree it was much better than Rebirth. Because Rebirth was a, ga- a garbage DC set, arguably. I Rebirth feel like. Was the here. <laughs> right. So I don't know if, like, that nasty t- taste Rebirth left in our mouth. And we're like, JLU, oh, this is amazing. But then we come back two years later to reflect on it, and we're like, well, we only got the Atom and Micron, the basically the Primes, the two Primes, Batman, Atom, Micron, Darkseid, and the Chases. Like, that's it. Ace. Uh, we'll see. She has keyword issues. She's great. Don't get me wrong. She's great. But she's got keyword issues. I, I'm just saying, like, to me, like, my, my order... I would still have Carnage number one just because I think they finally did a Spider-Man set justice because Superior Foes was also not very good. So they finally got back, and this is a good, good Spider-Man set. The chases are awesome. A lot of the other pieces, like the um, the secret identities, make a lot of these pieces playable. Like I don't think that full potential has been tapped outside of you know Mary Jane. Um, yeah. So that's why that puts me at number one, because it just had so many things. Secret identities, the equipment, the chases. There's just so much in this one set that it felt like it should have been split into, like, two sets. So that's clear number one to me. But I agree, like, Captain America should have been much higher. Because I feel like that set, from top to bottom, felt pretty good. Like, I liked the chases. Go ahead. It was awesome, and I maybe it's just because I played more sealed that set than any other set. But like, there was right. a lot of good stuff in the lower, like you had Rhea Hill, Peggy Carter's, excuse me, cool. You had Quake. Quake was really good from this set. Like you almost. And you him. also had um, um, the uh, Sharon Carter. Sharon Carter's yeah. really good. Um, Dario Agar could see some play. Trick Shot had a like a moment where people thought he would be okay. Um, he's probably not, but he, he's cool. So, um, so I, I definitely agree with Alex's assessment that, uh, well, on number one and two. So Spider-Man and JLU or Spider-Man and then CAV, um, is one and two. Wow. Before we, before we leave the CAV thought there, I wanted to just say, I got second in a sealed WKO and, uh, my team was, Singularity, Quake, Sharon Carter, and Ann Iron Man. Which Iron Man? Uh, uh, the... The Rare? The, uh, no, the uh, Energy Exploding one. The I uncommon. just forgot until this moment that we have Shifting Focus Iron. <laughs> I was right with you, man. <laughs> I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, so I think Venom and Carnage 
and CAAV are absolutely playable top to bottom competitively and casually. Yeah. What's your number three, Alex? That's a tough one. I think I would have to lean towards... I know I made that argument for JLU. I don't know. I feel like there's just a lot of untapped potential in Fantastic Four. Like, I feel like there's still pieces that just haven't been fully vetted because it just came out at a weird time. There's also a lot of garbage in that set. (laughs) There's some, but I mean, like, the rare Franklin Richards. I mean, I know you like him. He's good. Uh, the skull, uh, scroll general is that the good one? Or no, it's the other one. I think that's a good one. The silver surfers aren't bad. The super rare dad thing is good. Um, mm. I mean, the super rares are kind of garbage a little bit, but that Wolverine might see something with the X Men set coming out because he's a kind of a don't die piece. If you have a Fantastic Four piece, um, it, it's just. I, I keep not wanting to sleep on the whole form, the new Fantastic Four trait, because I felt like like we slept on it originally, and so I'm trying to make up for it, so maybe I'm trying to boost up the set a little bit more, because I feel bad that we just kind of... I mean, at least me, personally, I'm like, oh, this looks like an okay trait, and then come to find out it, it works way better if you take the time to delve into it. So, I don't know. I feel like maybe Fantastic Four is three, but... JLU, it's hard, man. I, I might put them both at like tied for third or something. No, so you know, I think, um, here, here's my thought, right? And and you know, I think we did admittedly sleep on the form of the Fantastic Four, but for my play style, you get into a lot of too finessey when it comes into the form of the Fantastic Four. The Fantastic Four set was not playable top to bottom competitively and casually. There's, um, there's so much just not good in yeah. this set. There's so much just not good, right, um, in that set, and that's just what bugs me about it. And that's why it's, I think it's got to be the bottom set of, of 2020. And then JLU's third. That's like, like maybe I can rank it again at the end of the year. Like, does my twenty twenty ranking change at the end of twenty twenty one? Maybe, yeah. Uh... I mean, that's something we could look at at a retirement party or something down the road. It's like these sets retire. How how good do they actually do? Because, I mean, I'm just looking at JLU and I'm I'm thinking the exact same thing you're talking about with Fantastic Four. I'm just seeing like couple pieces hit her there but like all right so let me go through jlu let me so you talked about your fantastic four argument i'll give you my jlu argument okay why it's third all right commons dr fate the scientists huh i just said amazing go on i'm sorry oh yeah dr fates um the cadmus lab scientists the switch out with lex uh jokers common amazo um, uncommon Lex, though. The, for competitive play, where you go to the great brain robbery thing, that's an amazing mechanic for thirty points. You go oh. back and you switch him out with the Flash. Yeah, I get that, but has it seen play? Like, I this is set of the year, so it's competitive and casual. Okay, okay, that's fair. Um, right, the uh. Amanda Waller was good for 35. The Amazo. Um, there might even be things that I'm missing here, right? This is just for me, right? Um, uh, robot Soups. Um, Agree on that, yeah. There's a Sinestro in this set? <laughs> yeah, the Sinestro, right? He's really good. I mean... No. no. Oh, no, he's not. He's <laughs> not. Uh, no. <laughs> for some reason, WizKids does not like Sinestro having willpower. <laughs> well, that Leave makes sense. Lantern, so. I know it makes sense, and it bugs me because he's such a good piece. <laughs> they did the same thing in. Oh, remember they gave they had the the ID card. There was one amaze, uh, one Sinestro before that was actually really good, but he just didn't have willpower. Uh, was it the Elseworlds? It was the Elseworlds one, right? Um, and then as so as we go through the rest of the uncommon, the Doctors casually. Um, 
the question half ass competitively, casually. Crimson Avenger, maybe competitively. Um, and that giving out an action token thing is, is yeah, something that we uh, slept it's, on. It's a prime yeah, slot, I will, though. It is a yeah, prime slot. It, that is the problem with him, right? He's too many primes that are better, right? Now, that, now to be fair, when I talked about Fantastic Four, I did not go into casual play. I, well, that's set of the year, though. When you're reading through this, I'm kind of siding with Alex. <laughs> like some some of these, I get. All right, like, so fine. We'll go. Let's we'll go through Fantastic Four. Let me no, no, no. Fin- fin- yeah, finish J O U. Finish J-O-U. So rares, you've got at least off the top of my head, you've got Amanda Waller, the Big Amazo, Parasite, with the op arms. Um, uh, there's some of these other ones in here that I haven't played. Uh, Batman Beyond, I think, is one that we haven't we slept on a little bit that has potential in the future. Or Solid and, Trophy. Yeah. He came um, out right in Hulk. <laughs> yes. Yes. My goodness, poor guy. Um, so, Super is Batman Beyond, Stripe, uh, Stargirl, uh, Ace, Adam, Micron, Star Sapphire, Ultra Humanite. Um, Dark Side. All yep. playable super rares. Man, that Wonder Woman is awful. Right, but how many super rares did I just lift off that were playable? Um, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, eight super rares that were playable. Uh, and then, nah, course, you said Star Sapphire, and I refused to mark her down, but. Star Sapphire is playable? He, I didn't want to mark her down, but that's fine. Dan Slater. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I was about to quit this call if you had said Mongol, though. <laughs> no, Brute. What do you mean? <laughs> so that, that's, those super rares are for competitive play. If, uh, I, was to add, if I was to add in um, casual play, don't, I mean... I think, I think that's everything in super rares. Not Wonder Woman. First. Not Wonder Woman. Okay, maybe not Wonder Woman. And then obviously all of the chases, right? Mr. Gold's good. I feel like he's good. Who? Mr. Gold. I think he's actually really good. He's got barriers free, double perplex. I don't know. I think there's something there. It's yeah, just hard because been. we still have um, uni PTSD. So we see him, and we're like, "Well, he could just get shot for six with Penn Sai, and he's dead." I feel like that's true. I feel like that, <laughs> I agree with that. And it's, it's not. That's true. where we need some of these. That's where we need some of these uh, team builder players to come back. <laughs> I think it's so. Let's, so let's it's, look it's at Dan's, Dan's. Wait, we could just say it's Dan's fault, right? Because we practice against <laughs> Dan so much. Yeah, <laughs> that it's just PTSD. Like, oh, it can't. It can't survive a six for hit for six. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, you know, we had a few things there in, un- in commons, right, with Fantastic Four. So when it comes to, or sorry, JLU, when it comes to Fantastic Four, you're looking at what? Doombot, Moloid, Black Leopard? Um, I mean, you can't throw out all of the Fantastic Four ones. I mean... Invisible Woman is no, because you got to remember the form of the new Fantastic Four. So, fan, Invisible Woman is actually somewhat playable in that instance because of the, the defend, the TK, and the enhancement. She actually might see play. Um, but the common one now, the Mr. Fantastic and the Human Torch and the thing, yeah, no, but I, I would argue pro- maybe her if we're going like maybe. So, Invisible Woman, Doom Bot, um. Scroll infiltrator, no Moloid, yes. Um, yeah, I mean, sure, the commons are a little. Trapster's pretty cool. Trapster, yeah, Trapster wasn't bad, but not, not, not any of any of. Those. All right, so uncommons. Um, Fantastic Four are good. Yeah, the, well, no, Invisible Woman's not the, terrible. The... The forty-five point doom. Yeah, I'm, dooms are, are cool. 
Valeria, uh, Valeria Richards, clearly. Valeria Richards to the Prime Punisher. Just be, no, never mind. Uh, the Uncommon Punisher. Sorry. So just three. Uh, yeah, four maybe if you include Invisible Woman. But maybe okay. So that's less than Jou. Okay. <laughs> rares. All right. So the uh, rares. Um. So you've got. I believe, like, most of the Invisible Womans are actually somewhat playable, I feel like. Okay, I'll 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 just concede that, I guess. So Invisible Woman, Human Torch. Yeah. Human Torch, no. What are we talking about? He He, saw play on the the Fantastic Four teams. Yeah, because he gives you Pulse Wave. That's the main reason. He can... He also gives everybody enhancement, so he's shooting for six. uh, The thing rare, I think, because of the POG... Okay, it's two. Doctor Fantastic. Dr. Fantastic. Yeah, I'll give you that. Um, Franklin uh, and Skull Richards is five. Yes, Franklin Richards uh, is this. This isn't the good scroll. scroll. No, this is the. Yeah, yeah scroll, scroll general. general. Yeah. 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 Um, the Silver Surfers. No. I mean the the scroll one. I think so for sure. I definitely. Yeah. Agree. Silver I'll Surfers. Give you, so the rares are. Pretty good. Uh, so it's one. So uh, commons and uncommons, it lost to JLU. Rares, it's beating them. Yeah. Um, okay. So you so could go with rares. You could go with dad thing. I think because okay. it wasn't Chuck. Uh, you could go past all the garbage. Um, <laughs> ghost the Rider, Wolverine. the the prime Ghost Rider. Prime Ghost Rider is okay. cool because that's the whole you know the retail thing for forty points yeah, is pretty good. It's pretty okay. Wolverine's pretty good, obviously. Um, Ancient Venom saw a little play as a as a Fantastic Four switch, and I think Nate played him, or someone had it. I know in that someone played an Agent Venom on the sideline um, as a switch in. Uh, Hulk, no, though forty points maybe, but no. Uh, Nihilus, no. Super Scroll, absolutely. Um, Blastar, no. Title Doom, Title Doom's one. I just don't want to. He's there. I, I give He's, the title. So, so that was that was five. Well, the problem is, is, so that's five. Even if you give me some of those arguables, JLU, we just counted up. I know it was eight. Yeah, that's but fair. they have more on board chases because they have two, and JLU only has one. No, JLU has two. I mean, JLU, JLU also have... has a ton of chases, though. Yeah. Yeah, but JLU has, um, I mean, Grodd and Brainiac are playable on board. I assume that's the two you're talking about. No, I was doing Brainiac and Wonder Twins. Well, Grodd's playable on Ruler. Easily. Yeah, that's true. That's, so that's true. three. Yeah, but people love Reed Richards' title because they think he would just win the game, even though it's not good. Right, that's but, not good, right? So, I mean, it's, it's pretty much... Uh, God, uh, Doom, Sue, Valeria, Franklin. I mean, should we just yeah. call the if the if, if the chases are a tie? Yeah, that's JLU JLU wins commons, uncommons, super rares. I think it's pretty close. Yeah, I, I think you'd have to call the chases a wash because JLU right. literally has more. But percentage right. if you wise, call the chases, if you call the chases a wash. Yeah, Fantastic Fours, the rares, and then JLU just wins in volume of commons, uh, uncommons, and super rares. Um, it's probably true. Now, for yeah, the re- I... for the record, JLU does have one more common than Fantastic Four. Oh, uh, sure. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's I pretty mean, cool. I, I mean, I'm not saying it's not close or whatever, but mathematically speaking, JLU pulls ahead of Fantastic Four. Yeah, but uh, apparently they both beat uh, Captain America. Yeah, which is where we don't agree with. Yeah. It was so good. It dominated like the first half of the year. That, that set. Like, it, so much was played from it. I liked it a lot. But maybe I'm thinking biasly because I played a lot of sealed. See, that's why I generally put those two sets as tied. 
but I can see your argument mathematically why JOU should be ahead. I think it'll be interesting come future foundation to see if that number changes. If there's yeah, it's more playable. Some of these Fantastic Four become more playable. I mean, that was our thought when we got the Phoenix set before with some of the other X-Men pieces. Because, you know, when you reintroduce a set and it's only one set, it's great, but you're missing variety. Yeah, so that's... Sure. That's what I'm eager to see. I, I mean, I think Fantastic Four could pull ahead of JLU because I think we're ultimately going to get more Fantastic Four than DC <laughs> in general, but who knows? Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. So let's get into some of our questions to round out the night. We're going to talk about some Crow and Revival, too, during these questions. So, um, All right, so Antonio Clark. Uh, what are your top five sleeper hits for House of X? Now, Antonio's been posting quite a bit, right? For those that don't know Antonio, um, he um, he gets asked what color tablecloths he wants for Nationals and Worlds because he does some amazing artwork. Oh, um, yeah. Now, what I've also learned the past month or so from Antonio commenting on Facebook is that Antonio wants to work for his win. Okay, if it's just going out there and blasting them for six, that's that's not his jam. Okay. Okay. So that's I think that's kind of how I'd like to make sure we answer his question is, what are what is the what do we think is the sleeper hits right the ones that you have to work for it in House of X. Uh, um. I think Cypher's good. I don't know if people are sleeping on him, but I think Cypher's pretty good. Um, I don't think anybody's yeah. sleeping on necessarily anything in a new set, right? Because it's all new. But yeah, yeah, Cypher, you have to work for it. Um, uh, I, I like Mora X. Ugh. Yeah, you, you got to work on her. Yeah, I hate yeah, You got to work for it. You got to work yeah. for it. I think mine is definitely Rare Hope Summers. I've been talking to her up. She's one that. Yeah. The the pick a power pseudo pick a power is always something I'm interested in, and she could kind of do that depending on who you have around her. So that's cool. Um, I oh, think I know. Go ahead. Prime Sworn has potential. I think still. So. Like I know there's a lot going against them, but it's just such a it's so it, there's so many things that work for him that I like about him. Um, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> He's equipable too. Um and well and Zorn could be healed too. Yeah, that's the biggest thing for sure. Is Zorn could be healed. And he's he, that those two things I think. He can be healed and he's a standard character. I feel like most characters that take one max damage, those two things don't apply. And it's very unique that he has both of those things. Right. And I that think, 19 defend is a big deal. Yeah, it's crazy. He only has one keyboard, but it's X Men, so right. I think people are sleeping on Maggot a little bit because it came out so much later. And also it's Maggot. So it's like Maybe. I think Maggot's like really good. <laughs> I think it I think it's very good. So it's one of those like I think it's really good and I'm sure the team builders also know that it's really good, but Maybe other people aren't looking at him as much. Yeah, that's true. Right. Because he, he did come out way later than all the other previews. And, you know, sometimes people are turned off by figures that look gross or sound gross, like Maggot or something. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I, okay. I think he's a little slept on, but that's because there hasn't been a ton of discussion or we haven't played with it yet. So it's kind of hard to figure out um, what's being slept on. I think it's slept on how... Um bad this storm is the rare storm she's just so awful needs to be brought to people's attention more oh gosh is she yes why does she have toughness i don't get it why why does a storm have toughness well storm's pretty weak defensively yeah right like i'm not i'm not arguing for involved if that's what you think <laughs> um yeah she's awful Maybe there'll be a team-up card. Maybe there'll be a team-up card that makes her better. Yeah, maybe. 
Oh, um, fastball special, I think is what people are sleeping on. I think that could be really good um, from the common Wolverine. Oh, common Wolverine. That's my slept on. I like that common Wolverine a lot. Um, I think he's really, really good. Um, he's 60 points. He's six clicks long. He has traded stealth, um, charge flurry, uh, precision strike. Exploit is good. Um, he would be a perfect candidate for a, the Krakoan revival um, because he can just go. Uh, and then the fastball special is like insane. So it's your team of Colossus. So you only need Colossus on your team. Um, and that, so Colossus then can use telekinesis, but only target Wolverine to place him. When he does, Col- Wolverine can use charge at no cost. So you TK him out, he charges, and then he can charge again or just flurry. So that's four attacks. Um, it's just Colossus. So there's a 25 point Colossus that we have that you could use for that. Um, there's also that other Colossus that's really good, the um, the one that gives out Invuln and Defend, I think. Oh, the Traitor one? Yeah. So this cool. would work with the 2x2, two two, right? The, the giant one or whatever? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I mean. It's a 25-point Colossus that you can TK this guy out and attack four times with. But doesn't that take... That would take up your prime slot, though. It would, and there's a... There, especially X-Men teams have very limited prime slots, so that that is a fair point. But I like that Wolverine a lot. Yeah, yes, I was yes, so combat reflexes like that's just so really from good. set review time to now, I will change my opinion on House of X Wolverine. Which one? This Wolverine, the one I'm talking about? Yeah, the one that you're talking about. I kind of, I kind of poo pooed on him because of how powerful um, 1776 and <laughs> War Machine is. Sure. But now that he has a fighting chance to get up to get all up in the business, Wolverine, uh, like with more with more than two actions, then mm-hmm. um, I can see it. Yeah, yeah. Wait, Wolverine uh, could just be blasted for six. So he's still. But, I mean, he he can, but I'm just playing. I, I, I agree with you though. At least when it comes down to the theme versus theme battle, um, he can get on a favorable map and has more than two actions now to work with. So I think that that opens up a lot of the set. I think the entire set now becomes unslept on because they oh, will get their four actions. Mm-hmm. Now here's a question, and I apologize if you if you talked about this. Um, what Colossus do you play with him? The, the Colossal? That's good. The, he's only a giant, but that oh, would yeah. be good. You know um, what I mean. It's still a, that's still a great piece for 25 points. It's it's very solid. But um, it means means no Bishop, means no Zorn. Right. That is the, the drawback. Um, and then I also mentioned the Super is also pretty good. Um, that gives out Invuln and, and Defend. Like that, That's a pretty good piece. Ooh. So, at least in this situation, right, I guess it, going with your 25-point Colossus fella, mm-hmm. he could retail, mm-hmm. TK up Wolverine, yeah, and, true, then true. Go to bus- and then go to business. Yeah, as long as, a lot of times you have to move him before you retail, which is a little annoying because it's only a direct path, but if you didn't, then yeah. Yeah, that's why he doesn't really see much play. Yeah, period. And it's also a he's a prime. <laughs> if he wasn't a prime, he'd, I think he'd see more play. Um, right. I think people are sleeping on Juggernaut. I think he's pretty good. No, <laughs> no, you just wanted to mention Juggernaut again. Not allowable. <laughs> um, I think that's about it. Most other pieces I think have been talked about. Um, I think there's a chance that um, Baby Cable sees play. Like he's, I like his his like he basically turn two he can he can move across the board. I don't think there's anyone else that can do that. Um, so at least from that, there's something. <coughs> okay. Well, that is decidedly more than five. Yeah. <laughs> um. So let's talk about Kirko and Revival while we're on X Men. Um. Is revival something you'd rather have your opponent than play it yourself? Like, would you rather be facing Krakoan or playing Krakoan? 
Oh, it's so hard to know. Um, <clears throat> it's just so I, I, I'm going to have to see it. I, I don't think I'm capable. So, here's the thing, right? And here's where this, like, balance of meta and all of this other stuff come into play and regional differences um, in a normal year, right? Like, me personally, when I play a team, I'm going to figure out very quickly with their playing for Cohen, what to target, when to target it, and then keep them at a point disadvantage. That's going to be my goal the entire time I face a Cohen team. So, yeah. so for like me personally, I'm not too worried about facing Cohen. So, like, if my opponent just keeps giving me points and keeps giving me pogs or whatever, right, I'm going to be in pretty good shape. Um, I, I think, after thinking about it this week, I'm not so sure that Cohen is for me personally. Yeah, uh, I mean, so the, the, I agree, because, yeah, you do play pretty specifically in that, I think most of the time when you build a team, I think your goal is to win on points more than wipe. Um, like it, it's not the only way you can win, but I think that's maybe forefront in your mind. I play different. I don't actually, <laughs> I don't normally count points. I'm just trying to wipe the other person. Um, and I think that's where Krakoa will shine because you're not going to win on points with Krakoa. You're just not. Um, you're giving the point is to give up points, but you want to wipe them just by keep going at them over and over again before they can do anything. So the the goal is to overwhelm the opponent, right? Uh, right. But my goal is going to be able to get four hundred out of you, right? Yeah, that's the yeah that's the trade off because I'm I'm not going to wipe you right necessarily. Yeah. Well, in this situation that's the build is hopefully you can't wipe the Kirkone team. Right. So, Tyler, what I would say more specifically is that you you are on generally the right path there. But as long – very few people can play from behind well. I can think of maybe four players that play from behind well. Um, and I think maybe like you and PJ are probably the two top off the top of my head. Um right. A lot of players start making bad mental decisions whenever they get behind. I definitely yeah. agree with that. And if you have a team that's going to be going 30, 30, 60, 60, 60, right? And I'm dinging up these points, and you're trying to get across the map, and I'm getting pogs, and I'm outwitting you, and I'm probing you, and whatever all these pogs do, right? you're going to start making bad target acquisitions as an opponent. So you've got to be practiced on how to overcome that mentally and stay focused um, as well, right? Because when the, the, the second part of that is I play defensively and then I'm going to have shape change. I'm going to have a fairly high defense. Right. Um, so anything goes bad for you, I want to keep getting points. I'm going to keep getting points. That's my goal, right? Yeah. And that so that's the negative side of Krakoa and Revival, and it's a it's a legitimate drawback. I think it's supposed to be a double edged sword. But the positive is, like as another scenario, let's say I move across the map with um, Lila Cheney, three Wolverines, and a, a Chase A, right? And I'm in your face, and I have a Dark Phoenix in my back line, and now you are forced to make a decision, right? Do I? Go after A, who has basically three stop clicks. I can't kill him this turn. He's behind stealth units. Do or do I attack a Wolverine? Even though, even if I kill him, he's just going to come back and attack me next turn, and then I'm going to get retaliated on. So that's the that's the positive is that it puts out a lot of pressure that you, you your opponent has to deal with because you, they can't kill a piece. You know, right. they they can't kill a Wolverine. That Wolverine is coming at you next turn. He's charging, flurrying with precision strike. So, you, you know, you got to deal with that. Right. No, I, and I agree. There's a lot of positives there, right? Yeah. And it just, um, I, I don't know the answer yet. Those are both, both well, things. And a that lot of that, and a lot of that, I think, comes down to um, 
sort of my uh, how do I want to say this? My my distaste with the power level is that I try to mitigate the dice a lot when it comes into playing hero clicks, and there is not that option currently. Um, there, there's no option to mitigate the dice because you're going to be on theme. I'm going to be on theme. It depends on who wins map, which map we go to, how you traverse the map, how I traverse the map, how my dice rolls go, how your dice rolls go. Um, and there's just not, it's just very dicey, right? So there's not a lot you can say about it, right? So if you're a good player and the dice rolls go your way, you're going to win. But if you're a good player versus a good player and the dice rolls don't go your way, you're most likely going to lose. That is yeah. true. There's, there's nothing you can do about the dice. Because there's not a lot of ways to mitigate dice currently. What is yeah. your good, Alex? Well, I was gonna say, like, I think definitely with Croco and Revival, it skews currently on the opponent. Like, the opponent likes to see Croco and Revival right now because we just haven't seen the Wombo combo yet, mm-hmm. and I think that'll greatly change once we see more competitive or see any competitive play with the set. To see the team, like Tyler saying, like everything right now is just in our headspace. It's all teams we've thought of, but haven't put down in an actual competitive ev- uh, event yet. So That's obviously, right. right now, clearly the opponent is in the advantage because right now on paper, yeah, it looks great for the opponent because you can keep scoring points. You get these cool pogs. Like there's no downside because we don't know what they can do yet. So. The potential's there, but as of right now, since we haven't seen any teams, I think it's clearly the opponent has the advantage. But who knows? Maybe there's going to be some X-Men Dawnbreaker team that comes out and wants you to get Pogs. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> um, That's so, awesome. I, yeah, let's play Dawnbreaker with it. I mean, there are some bad Pogs, though. I mean, the Phobos armor, I guess... Is a a left. No, there's no bad pogs. I mean, I guess like amazing. There's some that you're like, if it gets plus two stats, okay, or plus one stats, okay. Oh, I don't think it works. Dawnbreaker says whenever an opposing character generates a bystander, but that would be from its trait. But that would be from its trait, so it would generate right. It's the character's trait. I think it's not. It's maybe not an opposing character that generates it. It's your character that generates it. Whenever an opposing character generates one or more bystander. Yeah, it probably wouldn't work. Oh No, it, it doesn't work. Don't Ruined it. I know, it was a fun dream. It was another it Thomas was. Riker. <laughs> right. Alright, so McConnell Lamar wants to know how would you rank... Oh, no, sorry. I guess before we do that, um, Crow and Revival, right? More to come, right? Is there anything else specifically that we want to say? Nope. No. McConnell Lamar, how would you rank the SVAC chases post errata? Post errata. So obviously, I think, I think for me, it was seventeen seventy six was obviously number one. Then you go to probably Penny, probably Pharaoh. I think I put Pharaoh number one though. I do too. Yeah, I mean. Either way, I think 1776 just falls to third behind those two. I think people are sleeping on Hammer Eye still. I, I think he's really good. I would put him above 1776, maybe above Penny. He's He does a lot. He He's really annoying to deal with. Yeah, but, I mean, I don't think he moves because of 1776. 1776 is still good, still soldier, still stop click, still perplex, still leadership. He is. That's true. Um, Penny is still really good, too. <sighs> I mean, just no. from the keyword manipulation, right? Um, Penny. But Hammer Eyes is good. Hammer Eyes is a martial artist. It's yeah, not as good as Robot or Ruler, yeah. though. Okay, you're right. Yeah, so, I, I, mean, think I, I think. I think I would put Hammer Eyes there, though, even. Like, 77.6 is. Hmm. Soldier's good. <laughs> yeah, I'd right. put 76 third, Hammer I fourth. Oh, yeah. And then fifth, I mean, it, the Venom for sure. 
Yeah, I mean, the Venom being fifth, though, it, it, I don't know, it's like saying you're the fifth best, fifth best Ferrari. Like, yeah. you're still a Ferrari, dude. Yeah. Like, I think the, I mean, like, Gwen is just not. Gwen is the worst. Gwen is still definitely the worst. Um, so Raphael asked, my question is, have you noticed an increase or decrease in the number of fewer clicks players? Well, in 2020, it's going to be a decrease because of pandemic or at least people temporarily pausing. Right. Um, but I think, um, and I, and I do a lot of hero click social media, right? So, Raphael asks, uh, additionally, with the restrictions and other factors like 1776, Errata's, Jason's, I have found some people like me lost interest in the game and left. What do you think? Well, so Raphael, I think, and, and, and if I'm wrong here, I'm sure he'll comment later, um, but like, he was one of those players that, and, and there's a group, I don't know if a group, or there's several folks that I've seen that are necessarily are are kind of upset right about like 1776 getting hit so hard now the reason why is is a double-edged sword here i'll explain 1776 should have never been released as he was yeah clearly because they read them but my rub is that with kids Let's him be wrong for long enough to sell the set. Now, that's, that is something that is, I think is personally easily covered up by saying, well, we've got to get results. We've got to check to see how he's doing. We've got to find a good way to fix him. Yeah, There's that appearance to a lot of players, and I can certainly see where they're coming from, is... Well, that is awful little convenient amount of time for this really powerful piece to sell all of the boosters on the shelf. There is. It's very easy to come to that narrative. I agree. I don't agree that. that I'm not right. saying that I support I that I narrative. Agree. But I agree but, that it's it's easy to come to that. Right. <laughs> I think. I, I kind of think. To go with what he was saying, I think what we're experiencing now is that everyone goes through lulls and, you know, gets tired of new mechanics. And it's just COVID has given a lot of players a reason to actually finally stop. Whereas it's like, oh, I'll keep going. This thing isn't nearly as, you know, this new mechanic's not that bad. Or, or you know, I, I can keep up with the meta a bit. But now it's like, well, there's no tournaments to prepare for. So I can use this as an out to finally take a break that I've needed for hero clicks. So I, I don't think it's any, I don't think the new mechanics or anything have anything to do with it. I think it's just literally COVID. It just gives people the opportunity to take a break because there's literally nothing they could play except online. And that's not everyone's wheelhouse. Yeah. So. It's, mainly, it's mainly meta online. There's not, there's really not a casual scene online. Exactly. Yeah. Not a big one. There is, there is some. Yeah, there's some. But it's mainly mainly meta for sure. Probably discords that you are not currently in, Tyler. Yeah, that's fair. That's <laughs> I could have a bias there as a strictly meta <laughs> player. Yeah, and I, I do expect a lot of people to come back though. Like I don't think a lot of people are coming for good. Once things can come back and you can play locally, I think people are going to come back because they're going to want to support their local store. They're want to go. In, they're gonna want to get back into the game, and sure, maybe they were meta players and now they aren't. Um, but I, I think most of this is just temporary, uh, which is what everyone was hoping with COVID anyway. So let's hope. Yeah. Um, Ray Williams is Galactus worth the price of having to explain the purchase to my wife? I would say no. <laughs> I don't but think. Good. It just depends, Ray. Like from a competitive standpoint, like you're gonna be like, I'm gonna play this at a WKO or a Rock. Uh, probably not, but it's a damn good looking shelf piece. Shelf piece. That is, oh true. yeah, 
That's very true. I haven't um, taken mine out of the box. I have not either, but I've looked at it uh, in the package. Now, um, I so I've been doing some selling on eBay, as I mentioned a couple episodes ago, and I keep getting a, an advertisement now for a Marvel Legends, I think, um, Galactus on a chair um, with like a Silver Surfer that's going to run about $100. I'm not so sure what size it is. But usually those things are about comparable in size to what the Galactus is. So if we're talking about wife justification here, you can say, hey, I want a Galactus shelf piece, and at least I can play this one in my game. Mm -hmm. That's true. I don't actually think about Heroclix in that way very much, but, I mean, that is that is a statue, like or a statuette or whatever you call it. And those do sell for a lot. I, I didn't really think about it in that way, but it it's just as detailed as a lot of those, and probably worth just the the points is or the the cost is pretty similar. That's right. Yeah, you're you're spot on. That's that's you're exactly the point I was trying to make. Yeah. yeah. So now now, real quick, can we talk for a second about how little impact Galactus has made so far? I mean, I know it hasn't been legal a ton, but I don't need about it i didn't think it was good <laughs> like i feel like it falls in the fantastic four thing where it's just the potential hasn't been tapped yet because i feel like there's just too much going on with galactus to ignore but no one's played them like i mean people have been playing them but not in major events and one or what little major events we've had so i think it's very expensive and most of the pieces you would want to put it on are just better with equipment, is my opinion. Hmm. Um, I mean, it obviously has advantages. Um, yeah. It can't be stolen, like equipment or broken. Um, and then also, it has like a an end game, I guess, that you're building towards that equipment don't. But I just don't think it justifies the point cost, personally. Not yet, at least. Yeah, I think... I think because of that, I would also agree that it, it may be a big no for it to quantify that because it just doesn't have a place in the meta yet. So it just depends, Ray, if you want Galactus as a shelf piece. As and someone I, who, as, I, as someone, absolutely justify it as a shelf piece purchase. Yeah, as someone who doesn't do shelf pieces, um, he's literally sitting on my shelf right now in the box, and I haven't opened him. Okay. Just there just hasn't been a reason to. So as of right now, my wife would wholeheartedly agree it was a waste. <laughs> yeah. Um so Jay stands in with our last question, right? And we kind of touched on this earlier. What older modern figures might resurface once House of X drops? Uh what figure is going to make them see play? Um I think so you, you mentioned Colossus, of course. I think the Dark Phoenix kind of fell off a little bit, which mm -hmm. seems bad to me. She she is still a top three piece in the meta for me. Like it's insane how good she is. I think people forgot, and I think she's going to make a big comeback. So, I, I agree. She did win Nat, so it's not like she was that far away. I just feel like uh, there should be more of her with how good she is, though. Um, so I have a couple of thoughts. Um, and it's, it, it, I think the, maybe the easy answer is, is anything with the X-Men keyword. Yeah. Um, but, um, Alex is going to like this answer. Maybe potentially do as a Kukroan revival. What? Why? Dupe. Oh, dupe. Okay. I was thinking, um, whatever the shape change dude is. Never mind. Yeah. Maybe dupe. I can say that. Maybe dupe. Maybe I, I will I will say right now, 100% that'll see play that hasn't in a while is Chase Jean Grey if they don't end up eroding Psylocke. <laughs> That's true. That's well, yeah, I, I think we're all operating under the assumption that she gets... Right? As of right this moment, it has not been eroded. So. Yeah, we've got as a few more days moment. on that. So As uh, of this see. moment. Hey, what, speaking of that, you... quick seg segue, though. Uh-huh. Uh, for the upcoming Winter Clash of X event, yeah, we we are planning our banning that. Yes, you cannot okay. play. 
that Psylocke with Jean Grey. We're not doing any erratas or anything like that. I'm going to make an announcement on it uh, probably tomorrow. So no erratas. We're, like, we're not going to do our own errata. We're just going to say you cannot play that Psylocke with Jean Grey. Like, because that's against the spirit of the game to just sit there in your starting zone and just time everybody out. Like, it's not right. So we are, I'm going to put that out there because just the, in the event that somehow Whiskers does not put out an errata in time for the event. Mm-hmm. So sorry for everyone that was planning on playing that terrible idea. Yeah. So actually I have a few answers here and man, uh, there's a lot of good ones. I think um, long shot with the exo specs. You think that comes back? I, you know what? I have an open mind now okay. that I have an open mind now that um, 1776 allows for the four actions. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, Lila. Mm-hmm. For sure. Um, now, here's one that I like, Tyler. You may not even know about this one the LE Deadpool. The with one the wolf- that works with Wolverines? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Get some mm-hmm. mastermind, I think, right? Yeah. yeah. And then um and then he's got the stop click with the regen. Uh-huh. Um perplex, charge, blades. Yeah, you know, that's true. I'm, that's true. I, I'm not you know, my I, my mind is opening, right? I'm trying to I'm trying to expand my team building capabilities going into 2021 here um you know i I think something that's always been playable and will continue to be until the day he retires is le forge wow okay um at least from nate warren's perspective um (laughs) does nate you know who no, not Nate White, Nate Warren, the yeah, other yeah. Nate, the other Nate from Illinois. I heard what you said. Does he like him yeah. a lot? Or... Yeah, he's played him. He plays him all the time. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, so I expect that. Um, I mean, here's the thing: if any time we go to Chicago this year, or if there's nationals this year, Nate will be there, right? So that's part of my dossier on prepping for Nats. Um, Do you guys think that um, what's her name? Uh, the Scarlet Witch that people were really excited about, we'll see play. It's the the prob control one. The Ellie. Yeah, people liked her a lot whenever she was previewed, but she never really saw play. I think her no, and Quicksilver but... might, and Pixie might. That whole yeah. WKO prize set, because just the fact they're X Men, gives them possibility. Yeah, and then Quicksilver can take like Brotherhood or X Men, um, and he's got a really good support powers. Um, Scarlet Witch, I think, may, may be the the least possible of those probabilities, but uh, Pixie's a transporter. That's yeah. a really good transporter. Um, yeah, but is she better yeah. than Kate or Lila? Is the question. Maybe. I guess to be determined, right? Yeah, that's fair. It depends on how much you rely on her carries. Carry characters that share keyword can be placed within three instead of adjacent. So it depends on how you build your team to maximize that. Sure. Right. So if uh, Pixie carries Colossus and Wolverine and then places them within three, and then Colossus uses free TK and Wolverine charge flurries. It's not free, TK. Yeah, it's not free. Oh, shit. Never that mind. would be crazy. <laughs> oh, never mind. Dang it. Why did that good idea just not happen? Yeah, weird. Well. Cerebra. You could do play Cerebra, but she has Passenger 6. There you go. 75 points. Right. Done. I mean, so I think, but yeah, I mean, the short answer is anything with X-Men. the X-Men keyword, right? I mean, you've got the duplicate uh, cable. That's seen play, right? Free TKs. Uh, Mad Rod. The, the little, no. The little <laughs> mini Jubilee, right? The the small point Jubilee for filler. Yeah, uh, Savage Land Magneto. Oh. Uh, 
that's that I think that's my sleeper pick coming out of this. Yeah. Because uh, if I just say, oh, that's a nice uh, Wolverine you got there, or that's a nice Chase Apocalypse with Krako and Revival, let me get him off the board while I kill your Wolverines. Actually, I'm kind of liking this. I mean, I agree with you. That's true. Um, but it, the, this Colossus I'm looking at, I'm liking it more because he gives somebody Mastermind. So you just give your Krakow and Revival person Mastermind, right? And then you have to basically kill him before. I mean, you can outwit it and obviously stuff like that, but uh, that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, Cyclops Sentinel has the X-Men keyword, right? I mean, he's seen play, so... Yeah. Um, Legion, uh, Alex? Legion? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> oh, man. A Legion with your Hope Summers, Alex. That's my thought. Oh, I know. I've already thought of that. Too. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Um, you know, so the Cohen Revival has to be somebody that's higher, right? You like can higher points. More people, yeah. So... And I think the problem, I think what really gets the shaft here is Regenesis. Why? What do you mean? Because how cool would it be to bring back uh, the common Wolverine at 70? Why can't you do that? But he, well, you can, but he only gets his free Hela click if he's on the Jean Grey school. Yeah. There's a team up card that gives all X Men keyword people Jean Grey school. I can't remember who has it. It's at- good. Is it at Force Construction, though? I think so. Um, but I'm not sure who has it. Well, maybe if that works. I mean, I don't, I don't know which one it is off the top of my head. Uh, it's number four, which would be Wolverine. It's your Wolverine. Hey, there you go! When established in theme teens, friendly characters with X-Men keyword gain the Jean Grey School of Higher Learning keyword. But, so... but that doesn't work. So... Why? Because after revealing forces, you may replace a character. You can't choose a team of card if the starting character share a name. I hate that. I hate that. Oh, so you can't. Yeah, you can't play Wolverine with Wolverine. Okay, yeah, fair enough. That's dumb. It's hard to use this thing. I wish they just made it with set number. Like you couldn't yeah, play it with someone else from the set number. Yeah, I agree. And you also couldn't do your Colossus thing because you can only do one team up card. So really. Yeah, you can't play uh-huh. multiple, I don't believe. Why not? Uh, I think you it's can... in the thing of team up. It says it in there somewhere. You said it will say what now? You can't do multiple team up cards. Yeah, you can. You can just can you? You choose one you choose one every game. That's why right, you, right, that's well, why you no, play you all the Amazo do... ones. Right, but you can't can... do you can't use more than one in a game. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. It's not like yeah, you 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 choose one for that whole game. Game. Team up cards is hard to use. Um. So that's I think that's it. I mean, I I want some of the prize stuff to work better, like some of the LEs from Genesis to be better here. Um, maybe maybe like the Wolverine and the Cyclops that um, heal equal to the number of friendly characters, and as long as you're Cohen reviving. Your characters, that's another sort of like don't die piece to that thing, right? I forgot about those pieces. Uh, I'm trying to find them. Are they any good? Yes, like 101 and 102, they're they're really good top dial. Nice, man. Or, I mean, Cyclops was used as a... Oh, you could do, you could do the, uh, the Caveman Wolverine. Nah, I don't He's think that's X-Men. quite as good as... Uh, I don't think it's quite as good as the 101 and the 102. Yeah. So, but more to come on that. Good luck on everybody's pools this week as well. So, assuming that your store gets shipped on all of that. So, um, let's uh, let's round table close this one out tonight, guys. Uh, Alex, uh, Winter Clash of X is coming up on the ninth, so don't miss out because we need 32 people. We've got. Oh, I don't know. Half of that, maybe Just less than half. So, signed up. Um, yeah, definitely sign up for it because it's going to be a really, really fun event with some really great WizKids prizing. So, don't miss out on that. It's going to be really fun. Yeah, 
I need to get signed up for that this week. So that's on my list of things to do. Tyler? Um, I will say it every time I excite, I'm excited to play Juggernaut. I'll say it until until I can actually play him, which is the House of X tournament. So Are you going to uh, charge for your autograph? Um, it depends on who's asking, I guess. Fair. <laughs> all right thanks everybody for listening to click stuff today we'll talk to y'all next time